Now, no good panic, but there's been a slight guck up. Uh, basically, Screenflow decided he was going to eat all of the footage that was supposed to be for what was going to be set number six. So, although we started off up there, and obviously would have seen all the dialogue about Tess and Joel having a little to and fro about how obviously they're not good at what they do, they're just very, very lucky, and luck inevitably runs out. And Tess is rather cheerful and confident in confusion that she has no real fucking clue where she's going, she's just guessing we go in this direction. We don't get to see any of that, because like I say, Screenflow decided to be a little cock-end and eat all of my footage. We are heading in that general direction, but it does have mean I've already played this section, so I know exactly what's coming. Case in point, I know there's going to be at least two zombies in here. There's enough one in there somewhere, but I'm not entirely certain where he actually comes from. He seems to just sort of spawn, it's kind of weird. You don't see him on the echo location, you see these two guys, but you never see the third one for some reason. Oh come on, I clearly hit you directly in the face. See, there we go! Third zombie, just out of nowhere. I don't know if perhaps he jumps in. Is there a window in the back of that room, maybe? Can't tell. I'm really starting to dislike the fact that you guys can interrupt your attacks. You're not invincible when you're in the midst of an attack animation, you can still be hurt. I think it's a terrible, terrible idea. I mean, yes, it, again, it was all part of the whole encouraging you to actually pay very, very close attention to what you're actually doing and what, as I know, but still. Speaking of paying close attention, get off the kid, would you? This ain't that sort of game. This ain't Japanese. But yeah. Because I had to go through all this again, and I know how long it took me the first time. It took almost half an hour the first time I actually did this. I'm going to be replaying, just for this one section, I've created a separate save file, and I'll be replaying it on easy mode. Just for the sake of getting through it as quickly as possible. So on easy mode, I don't really have to concentrate at all on what's going on. I can just run and gun. It isn't my preferred style of uh, fighting, I know, but... The alternative was, I was very tempted, as I always am when screen flow screws me over, just to stop the LP then and there, but I thought, no. No, this game, the story, these characters, they deserve more than that. Climb on up. Which is, you know, something of a, a miraculous thing in and of itself, when you really think about it, that the game has already made me feel that strongly about it and its protagonists, that I want to see this through to the end regardless also means I can actually pick up this properly this time. Remember we took, actually, no, you won't remember me talking because I haven't actually done that yet. <laughs> Fuck, this is confusing, but um, in one of the later episodes I will speculate about the whole uh, virus being fungal and whatnot, and that more or less confirms it. We Apparently we're basing this whole thing on a type of fungus that has the ability to create um, sort of a, it's not exactly mind control effect, but it provokes certain types of behaviour that are... Okay, double time. Yeah. As if he of the batteries would not hear that. It creates certain types of behaviour that, uh, that are good for the fungus, more so than the organisms attacking. It's a real thing, it actually exists out there. Get off my feet! Not have my shoes, goddammit! What's with all these games and things that want to steal my shoes? Yeah, shop's closed, mate. Go to another butcher's. God damn it! Get off my shoes! But yes, it's a real world fungus, it usually affects ants, I think it is. You see, it drives them bonkers and it directs them to do things that help the fungus propagate. In this world, a strain of that has evolved that can affect more complex life forms, in this case humans. It makes them violent and aggressive because in the process they transfer bodily fluids which spreads the infection. As they're infected it slowly grows on them, same as it would on the ants leaking out spores and infect other nearby creatures. When I say creatures, it seems to be mostly humans. I'm rather curious that it's only affected one very, very specific subset of mammal. I'm expecting there to be some sort of payoff for that later. Yes, yeah, all a bit of dialogue there about exactly how Ellie got infected. She went to the mall and got bitten. So it's just pushy salespeople, you know? Oh, fuck, I forgot to show that at the this time. Basically, she knocks over a vase while you're busy creeping around. Keep in mind, you're normally doing this half expecting the zombies to somehow find a way in. They don't. But yeah, normally you'd be speaking, sneaking around expecting that to happen, and then suddenly she knocks over a vase behind you. 
Obviously, thank you so much, Lesson, by the fact I'm like half a floor away, so I didn't actually hear the vase smash. Still, you get the general idea. I'm hoping this isn't going to take me as long this time, because I. I'm alive! Yes, the inevitable separation that always happens in survival horror situations. Flickers! Run! They start willing on about their. The Samba classes and other tedious things. Well, there are actually three of you still. Interesting. I suppose this uh, confirms some of my speculations about how enemy placements change and whatnot. Apparently they don't. The only thing that changes is how much damage they can do to me. I'm imagining that the, uh, the clickers here are still instant kill, regardless of what difficulty setting you have them on. Tess. Which is kind of a shame, really, when you think about it. Hey there, sexy lady. That's the one I want to stick in you. The shiv! Get sliced, mushroom. So, yes. Damn. So, this is not going to compare to the original commentary because I'm not. Obviously, I have no sense of tension whatsoever now because I know exactly where everything is. I already know the strategy for getting past these guys. He killed the first one. She's a pain, and the ash keeps wandering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in a rather small area. So you kill her real quick. These two can be very, very easily distracted by tossing a bottle or a brick into the, uh, the correct area. Not by swinging your bat. He's me saying that I know exactly what I'm doing, I'm calm, I shouldn't give him a heart attack by doing that. I was expecting him to come running over, but again kind of noises they actually respond to and the arc of effect for those noises is surprisingly limited. No, not the gun you fuck with, the brick you were just holding. Right, that'll do. Just chuck it in there. That should be close enough that both the one on the left and the one on the right should go stomping off to investigate. Mm, I haven't used this bat yet, so I don't need to swap. Ah, good, they have both pissed off if they're in that general direction. I've also found out that Unless you're sort of, you know, right next to them, you can sort of amble along at full crouching pace, and they won't hear you. You the only time you have to walk really, really slow is in you know they're very, very close. Close enough you actually hear they're clicking properly. If they're that close, then yes, you gotta be damn quiet. Nothing down the stairwell, by the way, so don't bother investigating it. Oh. And there is a gentleman over here. He seems to be rather angry at doors. Not entirely certain how this happened. I assume. One of them killed his aunt in a previous life. Yeah, I've never actually met... The last time I did this, he didn't react to my flashlight, but... Let's should be on the safe side, shall we? Plus, it provides a bit of moonlighting. He's got basically the hairy Batman at this point. Where are you? Here! See, finally I get to do it! It's amazing. I didn't get to do that the first time. I was too busy panting quietly to myself and hoping that he didn't somehow hear my commentary. I think the lady said no, mate. Goddamn. Being a goddamn bad lighting. Very, very bad lighting. Alright, the kid, yeah, yeah, get around to that. Let me swap my guns first. Yeah, a uh, little health bar thing fills up a lot slower on easy mode. Oh, piss off. Why'd you all come straight at me? There's two tasty wenches in there. You all come running straight at me. I mean, I know I'm the player character, I'm important, but still. I've been... <laughs> If I've been playing this on hard mode, I would be dead by now, basically. Anytime you get attacked by more than one or two of them, you are basically dead. That's all there is to it. Do you see, guys? It's something to do with the fact I have a full head of hair and you're covering your bones with a beanie. Is that what's annoying you? The one behind me, isn't there? Yes. Hey there. How's it going? Also part of the beanie brigade, I see. Tracksuit bombs and a beanie. I don't know if I didn't want to kill you before, I certainly do now. Gentlemen! Shoot Tess in the face, she just, she just shrugs it off. She's a boss, goddammit. She was playing this game as her. A lot more interesting. I'm basically dead again, aren't I? Hmm. Hey, H. Should we call it a call to Hartman? What do you reckon? Ooh, to the face! How good the annoying health effect disappears when you're not actually in combat anymore. That's good. We have already shown this, but yeah, you can craft health kits if you need them. 
surprising. The first time I did that fight, I made it out a lot simpler. I basically just lured them into that one room over there. They could only really come in one at a time and just kept clubbing them. Until my club broke, and then obviously I beat them with my bare fists. Test. Between that and test shooting, it was surprisingly effective. Just a bit winded. Look this way. This will get us to the roof. What well, about you, kid? You okay? We're fine, okay. Not dead, Still basically. Do yeah, Joel agrees with me. Breast count? <laughs> yeah, they can. Uh, see, it's reassuring to see the banter okay. that's arising between these two. I mean, obviously, it's going to create a horrific, horrific emotional fall later in the game at some point. The closer they get, we got to find a way across. That's pretty much a given at this point. This doesn't strike me as the kind of game that's going to have a happy ending. Kind of weird, actually. The only other Naughty Dog title I've actually played, or title, should I say, of the Jack and Daxter games, obviously very, very fixated on the humour and whatnot, even in their dramatic moments, they tend to abruptly end in comedy. So, yeah. All right. Now, watch your step as you're going out, because it's going to be a little... <laughs> you just sass me. Young lady, I will kick this plank and you will fall to your death. Or not. Joel's a bit more soft-hearted than I am. Oh, is that everything you No, she's missing part of her eyebrow. Jury's still out. But oh, man. You can't deny that view. Yep. Yeah. There's something strangely beautiful about post apocalyptica, isn't there? Hey, oh dear. Let's pick it up. You guys notice him staring at his watch after talking to the kid? Yeah. Don't start mistaking her for your own kid. Joel, it's not gonna end well for you, mate. Stay focused. Yes, ma'am. Tess, ball buster extraordinaire. Then again, Joel seems like the kind of guy who needs a good smack around the head every now and again. It's right around this corner. And instantly we teleport all the way there. I'm not sure I feel about that. I suppose it's part of this being a you know, quite story fixated game, which is, you know, the kind of game I like. But it means you sacrifice gameplay for pacing. I mean, you could obviously have had, you know, built the entire city and had me wander across it to get here. But if you're trying to go for a theme and, you know, maintain a certain prescience of story, then it's not really that effective, is it? See, patrol run for area, ensuring no military presence, move the girl to the safe house. So they had this all planned out. Perhaps it's all going to be alright after all. Never know, stranger things have happened. Spontaneous combustion of the Mayor of London springs to mind. What's that back during the 1800s? That time it rained fish in this country. One of a weird sort of leftover from a, a hurricane in America, I believe it was. I really hope that stuttering I'm seeing is just happening on my laptop here. Yeah, it's happening on my television. Mm, is that good or bad, though? I'm glad Marlene hired you guys. I wonder why the kid can't swim. I know you guys are getting paid for this, but... Um, I think I doubt there's really any leisure pools around. Yeah, sure thing. Aw, it's cute. She's trying to be grateful. In that sort of sarcastic, offhand way that teenagers have. Ooh, swan boat. Huh. Looks like we don't have to worry about you swimming, kid. Then we'll go for a ride. But we'll save that for the next episode, yeah? So... Comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye now.